Hi there, I'm Peter Enrico of Enterprise Performance Strategies and I want to thank you for joining me to learn more about mainframe performance fundamentals and concepts. Today we are going to discuss mainframe measurements and in particular I want to help you to better understand and evaluate a key ZOS performance indicator known as the ZOS Workload Manager Performance Index. Now this video is actually part one of a two-part series and during this video I want to explain the basic background and concepts of the Workload Manager Performance Index as well as its basic formulas. Hey there, my name is Peter Enrico with Enterprise Performance Strategies and I'm a co-creator of Pivotor. My team and I are here to help you get great workload performance while optimizing the usage of your system resources in the mainframe environment. Our education and our Pivotor software are geared towards helping you get better performance results and faster. Now if you're new here, make sure you click the subscribe button and any of the references I give in this video will be linked in the references below. So let's get into it. So as I said, in this video, I want to help you to better understand and evaluate a key ZOS performance indicator known as the ZOS Workload Manager Performance Index. First, if you're not familiar with the uh, ZOS Workload Manager, please look for other videos and presentations from us on this subject. Um, I also want to mention that I use the name Workload Manager interchangeably with the acronym WLM. The performance index, also known as the PI, is a measurement that both you, the performance analyst, and the ZOS workload manager uses to evaluate how well workloads are meeting their assigned WLM goals. At its core, the PI is an indicator of how well or how poorly a WLM service class period, meaning a workload, is either achieving or missing its performance objectives. The performance index not only helps us and workload manager to evaluate how well work is meeting its performance objectives, but it also allows us and workload manager to compare how well unlike workloads with unlike performance goals are achieving their performance objectives relative to each other. Now this is an important point because the PI is one of the foundational measurements that WLM uses to decide which work to help achieve its performance goal and also which workloads WLM wants to steal resources from in order to help the work that is missing its goal. Now as I said, the performance index is a measurement used to evaluate how well a workload is meeting its assigned performance objectives. So what sort of values does the PI have? Well, a PI value of 1 indicates that a workload, meaning a WLM service class period, is meeting its goal exactly. Right? A PI of less than 1 indicates that the goal is being exceeded, meaning the work in the service class period is doing better than the goal value. For example, a PI value of 0 0.5 indicates that the work is doing twice as good as its performance goal. A PI value of greater than 1 indicates that the goal is being missed. So for example, a PI value of 2 indicates that the performance goal is being missed by twice as much. Now, how is the performance index calculated? Well, the basic uh, formula for the performance index is the ratio of the goal value to what the work actually achieved. So what the goal value is to what the work actually achieves. So this means that the performance index is an indicator based on the objective you've assigned to the workload relative to what performance the workload actually achieved. First, the most common source of the inputs to the performance index formula for reporting purposes is the workload manager component of the MVS or the ZOS operating system. The PI is actually WLM's point of view of how well the goal is being met. So for the purposes of this discussion, you can calculate the performance index using the measurements in the SMF 72 subtype 3 record. That's where workload manager cuts data. This is the SMF record where goals um, for our WLM service class period are recorded 
and also the measurements of what the work actually achieved are being recorded. And it's these two measurements that we use to calculate the performance index. So for example, the basic formula for the performance index for what we call a response time goal is um, the formula would be what the work actually achieved divided by the goal value for the work. So for example, for, th for this basic formula, for example, say we have a response time goal of one second. If the workload achieved exactly a one second response time, then the ratio of the goal value to what was actually achieved is one divided by one or one. Okay? And then what we want to do is we want to be able to say, all right, what happens if we actually achieved a response time of a half a second, meaning we did better than the goal value? Well, a half a second divided by the goal value of one is equal to 0.5, which means we did twice as good as the goal because 0.5 is better than a one second response time. If we have a one second goal and we actually achieved a two second response time, then that means the PI is 2 divided by 1, which means the PI is 2, which means we did twice as bad as the goal value. That is how PI is calculated for response times. So what is the performance index calculation for workload manager velocity goals? Well, it's still the ratio of the goal value to what was actually achieved, but the formula is sort of opposite, flipped from that of response time goals. And why is that? And that's because the concept of velocity goals is we want high velocities are good and low velocities are not good. Where with response times, it's the actual reverse. We want low response times and we don't want high response times. So you would expect the calculation to be flipped. So in this case, the calculation for performance index for velocity goals is the velocity goal value itself divided by what was the velocity actually achieved by the workload. So let's think about that. If I have a velocity goal of 40, and I achieve an actual 40 in that workload, then 40 divided by 40 gives me a PI of 1, which means we met the goal exactly. But let's say I have a velocity goal of 40, and we actually achieved a velocity of 80. We did so much better than the goal value. What's the performance index? Well, 40, which is the goal value, divided by 80, which was what, what was actually achieved, 80 into 40 gives us a value of 0.5. Our performance index is 0.5, which means we did twice as good as the goal value. And so what happens when we miss the goal? Well, let's say we have a velocity goal of 40. We actually achieved the velocity of 20, okay? So then what happens is we have a velocity goal of 40 divided by we actually achieved the velocity of 20. 20 into 40 gives us 2. We missed the goal by twice as much. So that's the calculation for the performance index for velocity goals. What about discretionary goals? Well, discretionary goals don't really have an objective. They don't really have a goal value. So what would the performance index be? Well, they don't really have a performance index. Well, that's not really true. Internal to Workload Manager, all discretionary work has a fixed performance uh, index of 0 0.81. 0 0.81 is the performance index always for discretionary work. Now, why is that? Well, I'll tell you what. Go to part two of this video where I'm going to be talking about reporting of the performance index and how to recognize patterns and what you can what, when, you, when you look at a performance index report, what to look for and how to evaluate it. Look for that video, and in that video, I will describe or, dis or tell you why Workload Manager uses a performance index of 0 0.81 for discretionary work. So thank you very much. I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next video or having you in the next video. Uh, Peter Enrico here talking about performance indexes. Thank you.